Welcome to another episode of Data Journeys. This is where we come to learn from data leaders. And today I'm excited to talk to Bob. Bob is the CTO of Choreograph. This is a fast growing organization, really focused on data, five petabytes of data under management. We're going to talk about the work that they're doing. Bob, thank you so much for talking to us today. Let's get right into it. What does Choreograph do? Yeah, my pleasure. Good to see you. Um, so Choreograph is the, let's call it the data platform or the, the data enablement arm of WPP. So over the years, we've actually produced a lot of really cool, really advanced, uh, both technology stacks, also data products as well, and application services for WPP and our agencies. And about a year and a half ago or so, Mark Reed decided that he wanted to bring the best of breed technology and organizations together collectively under Choreograph, which is pretty cool because, as you guys know, the aggregation of data into a single point and the enablement of that data at the application space is nothing more powerful than that, right? And the amount of, as you mentioned, the amount of data that we manage under cover is very significant. So being able to bring that all together and then power that into the application space for WPP and our agencies is just really remarkable stuff. So we've been working on it now for about a year and a half or so, um, bringing together basically 10 different applications and services together under Choreograph's umbrella, and then working now to aggregate those into a central platform that we're calling the data cloud, um, which is gonna power our applications and services across WPP for our, for our agency friends. That's outstanding. So you're selling into agencies, obviously a large volume, a lot of intelligence going into these solutions. So tell us a little bit about the use cases. How is the data uh, prepared? How is it consumed? How does it work? Yeah, really good question. So we deal in multitudes of services and data types, everything from data um, and identity type data to audience generation, to the selection of audiences based on campaign requirements. So building those audiences up, um, extending those audiences through ML services such as lookalike and clustering and a bunch of other services as well. Exporting that information and those data sets into campaign planning platforms um, and so that our planners can actually put together best of breed plans against campaign deliveries. That goes into activation systems which can activate um, campaign setups and also audience setups into the demand side platforms. And if you don't know, what a demand side platform is, that's the engines that's run by Google, for instance, to deliver the right campaign to the right person at the right time for the most impact, right? All about campaign performance, right? So the activation of that information into, into Google's DSPs, as we call them, and then um, data coming back into us on the campaign execution side that allows us to understand how we're performing against KPIs and also being able to do analytical and visualization work as well. So very much a full suite, everything from data to audiences, to campaign planning, to activation, and then the, the let's call it the loop back of data back into our systems for campaign performance and analysis. Large, large data sets um, on the audience and identity side, we've got uh, over 2.1 billion profiles undercover that is unified across third-party ID spaces. We also have high secure systems as well that allow us to bring in consented, secure um, PII information. Of course, that is all undercover and all secured within our systems that allows us to build profiles under those as well. Um, again, those P that PII information stays inside of our premise um, in a high trust kind of environment, never gets outside. Um, but we deal in all sorts of different types of data and all the way into events and aggregate data on the campaign performance side. But uh, billions of profiles under covers. It's a global installation across 65 plus countries um, and uh, all on GCP on Google Cloud. So that's really amazing. A global platform all the way from audience creation to activation. Let's talk a little bit about the architecture. How do you lay out those bricks to create such a, a unique uh, global and scalable architecture for your business? Yeah, great question. And we're in the midst of, of modernizing this to a certain extent. So when we brought Choreograph together, we brought, um, as I mentioned, I think 10 different platforms to bear in different areas, audience platforms, campaign planning platforms, activation platforms, uh, analytical and visualization platforms. And they all have their own data sets associated with the application stack themselves, right? Now what we're doing is bringing all of those data assets to get together into a data cloud, right? 
that allows us to, in a clean room environment or non-clean room environment, depending on the data types that we're working with, bring data into the center securely in a privacy manner that still allows us to do the ML and, and data science work centrally within our environments and then um, power that data up into the application space for a unified approach in, across WPP. Um, so we have individual platforms currently today, but lots of work going on now to actually unify that into a central platform. And you lifted this off from a previous system onto Dataproc and then BigQuery yeah. and, and Bigtable. Tell us a little bit about that process. How did that yeah. go and how, how should people approach that? Yeah, no, that's a really good question. And we're still doing it, actually. Some of the some of the systems that um, are part of Choreograph now that came into us are still on-prem, and we're in the midst now of moving that into GCP as well. But we started this journey about three and a half years ago or so. Where we had um, identity platforms that were, that were on-prem. So we had North America, EMEA, APAC, and also in China, all inside of physical data centers. And what happened to us is we were in an explosive growth phase. We moved from kind of small services, a couple of customers here and there, doing some really cool stuff. But all of a sudden it started to really ramp, very much like a startup kind of organization being successful and ramping quick. What we found is that we just didn't have the flexibility that we need. This really wasn't a financial thing for us. This was much more of an agile thing. Being able to increase capacity, decreased capacity in systems that were no longer needed, and also shifting um, different services and different capacity around within the environments that we deal with. If you have a physical infrastructure itself, it's really, really difficult to do that because you're bound inside of the machines that you already have. And any time my boss comes to me and said, hey, um, we've got five more customers coming our way, what are you going to do about it? It takes me four to six weeks to actually rack and stack and do OSs and all that good kind of stuff, right? So we decided to go ahead and take a look at the cloud um, environments to see what we can do. Now, I'm a little old school. I've been around doing this for like 30 years and so. So I'm a data center guy, right? I, I like physical data centers and I've always liked physical data centers. So I was probably one of the biggest naysayer of all, but I wanted to have a go at it. So we decided to go ahead and start out by taking one of our largest audience systems, right? Which has 2.1 billion profiles undercover, doing millions of transactions at the front door, over 30,000 nodes, computers associated with this thing, right? So large, large systems out there, 5.2 petabytes of data undercover. So I mean, it was big systems type of stuff. And we decided to go ahead and lift and shift this thing into GCP. So what we decided to do was just take a look at how many nodes we were running in the data centers themselves stand up exactly the same environment inside of GCP and give it a go, right? So we stood it up, we installed all the software, we shifted the, or actually we split our data pipe so that it went into our, into our data centers, but also into GCP. We stood everything up, fired it all up, and voila, it worked. It was pretty awesome, right? And the reason why it was really, really good is because of, well, actually, let me get to that in just a second, right? We stood it up, really awesome and um but the cost was three times more expensive than what our data center was at the day right so we kind of took a step back and said okay now we know that the cloud infrastructure works right and it can it can support us but we needed to figure out how to bring the cost under control so the first thing that we did is we replatformed ourselves so we moved from highly clusterable third-party applications and services and we re-engineered that into gcp services so this is things like Bigtable, BigQuery, Dataproc, GKE, GCS, those types of things. So we got off of Hadoop and went to Dataproc, those types of things. Re-engineered all those, reinstalled it all, fired it up, and it still worked, which was awesome. And our cost reduced by a third, right? So that brought us back into the same territory as our cost inside of our data centers. But the most important thing then, so then everything was good. We fired it all up. And we cut everybody over. We did the migrations. We did APAC first, did EMEA second. Then we did uh, North America third, very successful. Um, moved it all over, decommissioned the data centers. And then, then we did the most important step of all is we right-sized it, right? So what I mean by that, and one of the reasons why we picked GCP is GCP gives us the ability to right-size nodes against the requirements of the application running on the nodes themselves. So now we could go back in and say, 
what exactly is this application consuming on that particular node? And we can dial down or dial up CPUs or main memories or networks, right? Without actually having to replatform that application. So we right-sized it and we actually cut our costs in half. So we walked away after doing the lift and shift, replatforming, right-sizing, we, we actually reduced our costs from our physical data center in half and still got better performance, much more flexibility. Um, so it was, it was a great win all the way around. So I think this explanation is actually a great transition into our next section, which is best practices. This is obviously people listening to you know this is not the first time you've done this. So let's talk more about that. What What is a best practice? It sounds like don't waste a migration sounds to be like one, but how do you plan about that? Do you have a different project plan? Do you bring different types of people? How do you make sure that you're not wasting the opportunity of a good migration? Yeah, yeah. So, you know, the, the, the biggest key in all of this for us was a really, really tight partnership with Google, right? So we had some folks on the ground inside of our engineering organization from Google that basically sat next to us while we figured this whole thing out. Now, that was key because that allowed us to get our questions answered quickly. We, it, it never, it's never perfect, right? So we had issues here and there, right? But they helped us figure things out. Google engineering was really on us as well, which was great. So they helped us work through some issues and that sort of stuff as we worked our way through. But at the end of the day, having a really, really tight partnership um, to help us move this stuff across and educate ourselves was really, really paramount, right? So we sat down um, and we're also very much, we're going to do this ourselves because at the end of the day, we have to own it and we're going to continue to run it ourselves at the end of the in, end of the thing. So we never outsourced it. We never used any contractors or consultants. We did all of this stuff ourselves inside of engineering, inside of QA, inside of technical operations, network operations centers, all that sort of stuff. We wanted to do it ourselves because we have to own it at the end. Working really closely with Google, they ramped us quickly. They educated us. They solved some problems that we had that we were trying to work our way through. We actually were able to stand this thing up together in partnership, which was great. And then uh, we worked together to cost reduce this thing after we had it running. And, 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 and a few of us naysayers were convinced that this thing was actually going to work at the end of the day. So the best, practice, the best practice is, is don't just lift and shift, right? Um, you have to re-engineer your platforms to take the best um, advantage of the shared services, which where that's where you get the bang of the buck. And then don't forget to right size at the end of the day. That's where you really save the money because you can tune the nodes to the specific application itself and only pay for what that application really needs and, and, and not any overhead past that, right? The other thing to remember also is make sure that you have a really good program around reservations. And what I mean by that, right, is once your systems are running, you really get a good understanding of your consistency across cores and main memory and networks, right? So that you can now go in reserved a particular capacity across a year, right? And that way you get higher discounts against your computes, against your CPUs, against your memories, because you're now reserving that for a particular year. So we put a lot of effort into really understanding what our infrastructure looks like and how it runs on a day-to-day -day basis. And then we reserve ourselves across that year because we know we're going to need that capacity at the end of the day. And having the ability to customize for that is, is really important to really important. So, so yeah. let's talk about the opposite of that. What is the thing that you've seen over the years might not be at the current company, it might have been before, which is a typical mistake people make yep. that might make sense in the context, but then looking back, uh, just slows down your migration or your modernization projects. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think it's two, I think it's two things. Um, and I have been at companies prior, um, other large companies prior that have done this type of thing as well. And I think the mistake that they made was they only went in halfway. And what I mean by that is, is you have a platform. And that platform is the platform that you want to migrate from on-prem into the into GCP or into the cloud, right? And um, a lot of them picked portions of the platform, but not the entire platform, right? I think you really get the bang of the buck when you can get that whole platform into the cloud itself, because you don't split it between on-prem and the cloud and then have to pay for transit and coordination between the individual environments themselves. Go ahead and select your platform totality, the ones that are encompassed and enclosed, 
and move that entire thing into the cloud, right? That, that way you can get the advantage across that, that complete in, environment and that complete platform itself. The other thing is a lot of folks just do the lift and shift and they say, ah, oh, okay, I'm done. You know, I, I did a great job, you know, pat myself on the back and I'm all done. But that's only the start of it, right? You need to take a look at the architecture itself and understand what your architecture is and how you can replatform into the shared services, as I mentioned before, that's step one. And then right sizing is key. Very few people understand the concept of right sizing. And you really need to take that step to make sure that you that you get yourself all the way there. Bob, those were amazing points. Thank you so much for spending the time with us today. And I hope people are going to reach out to you to talk to you more about your success. In fact, to do that, just click on the link down below for more stories just like this one. Until next time, I'm Bruno Zizer.